Mm, welcome, welcome in. We're going to start in a few minutes. So, mm. again, my um, my intention is to start as many of these live streams as I can a little bit a little bit early, so that it gives us time for us to share a few thoughts, a few ideas. If you have questions. We'll ask you just to put them in the chat, and um, I'm happy to answer them. Oh, Lisa, I, <laughs> we, you asked a question last time, and I'm, I'm actually trying to remember it. I wanted to reach out to you in the past few days, but I didn't have a chance, so we have a minute. Um, I wasn't exactly certain as to your question, so I know it's not easy to type in real time and maybe get it, some clarity about it. Um, were you more or less asking, okay, here's what I got from your question. The question was something along the lines of, um, are the recorded trainings, the four uh, online master trainings, are they, do they begin to break down how we can enter the technical or kind of how we can gain knowledge about the technical aspects of the transformative nature of these practices? That's something along the lines as I understood the question. And uh, you talked about, I think, even like some of the uh, potentially emotional um, releases and experiences. Um, you know, what I would offer is that there is in those, cl in those practices and, excuse me, in those uh, trainings, a lot of in-depth knowledge about how we sequence uh, keeping in mind all of the major considerations of the tantric hatha tradition energy mind emotions body doshas ayurveda in other words so there are a lot of different components to working with it my own sense also is that when those things are organized coherently and we become extremely strategic in in our teaching then it automatically lends itself to the experience being more coherent and more assimilable, if you will. It touches all parts of us. And as a result of that, I would then say that, any, that in the process of being touched on all levels, that any areas of our life where there's a lack of clarity or we haven't yet transformed or haven't fully processed everything, then that's bound to produce different um, insights and experiences, even emotional releases and things like that. It's not, necessarily, it's not necessarily something that we go for by default, but rather it's something that unfolds in the process. And a key part of being mindful uh, when we practice is that we hold space for ourselves and that Ideally, a teacher is creating that same sense of safety so that we feel comfortable allowing ourselves to have feelings, emotions, releases, insights, epiphanies, uh, and yet stay, just keep a little bit of track with the witness, with the observer, and so that we are neither trying to create emotional experiences nor deny them. They surface in the flow of a organic uh, in well-informed practice, and we can observe them, process them, move through them, and they can reveal the highest good. Though, that's a little bit of a, the essence of what I remember your question to be and how I'd answer it. So, if you want more information, just reach out. Okay, so welcome everybody. Short form today. The theme is this, move past inertia. And let me just say this, that there's physical inertia, mental, emotional inertia, but there's all sorts of inertia. But the main focus in the yoga tradition is our cognitive inertia, uh, kind of um, habituation in the field of the mind and where we begin to lose sight of ourselves in the grander sense, uh, in the sense that allows us and inspires us to consistently move forward and to expand from where we were to a better place. That's the nature of practice. And so, in this short practice, what I want to do is just walk you through asana, a sh very short asana, just a select few, move you into some pranayama, 
and then we'll close with meditation. Okay? So let me close this and let's start. Let's come up onto our feet, please. And uh, we're going to start just with some simple arm raises. So as you stand tall, let's inhale, raise our arms. And then as you exhale, slowly the, lower the arms back to your side. The intention now is to begin to move. And one of the ways that we do that is reflect, is to become less habituated in our perception. Simple. Become more oriented to the present moment, to the pulsation of now. Two more times. Now let's stay there. Softly begin to reach up off your waist. Deepening your breath. Throughout the practice, I'm going to ask you to keep your breath even. Possibly five or six count inhale, five or six count exhale. And with each breath, there's an opportunity to more completely grasp or rest in the moment. So just one more breath. I use the breath to raise my collarbones, lift my heart, and then exhale and lower both arms. Okay, so open up the feet a little wider than shoulder width apart. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, gently fold. Contract the belly at the end of the exhale. Inhale all the way up, please. Place the left hand on the hip, right arm is up. Exhale. Lateral stretch. Inhale back up. Forward fold again. Contract the belly, bend the knees a little bit so the over upper back does not round too much. Inhale, come up flat back. Other side. So we're going to keep moving in this way, maybe a little further each time. Again, looking to, through a clear mind, an empty mind, a mind free of expectations, to see beyond our limitations. And I'm going to move with you. Roughly again, it's six counts in, six counts out. So as I guide you through this, let me just add a few words. If we want to, break the patterns of inertia. I'm going to give you an assignment. One thing, just one thing, find one thing in your life that you take for granted and bring a measure of appreciation to it tomorrow. Just appreciate it in a way maybe that you haven't been One other assignment, break one habit, do something differently, even if it's a something as simple as the way you brush your teeth. One thing, the way you sleep, the way you set the table. Okay, we're gonna hold it. Exhale, forward fold. Please stay there. Just four or five breaths. Squeeze the belly toward the spine as you're breathing out. So even there's a quality of appreciation to the breath that you may not otherwise be applying. 
the general domain of our inertia is in the hips, in the lower back, in the pelvis. So feel as though that's being cleansed. Have the intention to disrupt the stagnation in that area. Good. Next inhale, slowly come back up, please. Come back to standing. And your spine is tall. Now, the pulse of the moment is most vibrant here in the heart. Okay. So let's do, while we're still standing, just one more technique. Agnisara, and we're applying this abdominal lift to get there. So I come to this position. Tailbone lifts slightly. Lower back dips. Exhale as though you send a wave of contraction up through the feet to the legs. Draw the tailbone in, pelvic floor lifts softly. Now hold the breath out, draw the belly back in and up. Before you have to inhale, release it from the top down ideally. Then release all the way to the soles of the feet and let's do it again. All the breath out, the wave contracts upward. Draw the belly back and up. Release the upper abdomen, middle abdomen, lower. Okay, let's do it one more time. Then we'll add something. Intensify the contraction, intensify the lift. Activating the internal organs, cueing the nerve plexuses in the navel. Release, inhale, stand back up, please. Take a moment. Pause if you feel any lightheadedness, the chin draws down slightly. Even just feel the newness starting to rush into that space and how that begins to shape and influence, expand perception. There's a kind of brightness now to perception. We're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to pump the abdomen. So go to the same position. Same thing, exhale all the air. Hold the breath out. Now start that pumping action. Draw it back, pull it up, release. Again, up and out, all while the breath is held out. So abdomen pulls in and up, release, pull in and up. When you need to, inhale, stand back up. Again, lightheaded, chin drops slightly. We're going to do two more times, same thing. Standing in between each round. So I exhale. a strong cue. And last one. When you need to, stand up. Let your breath adjust. Well, its intent is to break down those energetic cobwebs. That should help. Go ahead and lie down onto your back on the floor, please. As you lie down onto the back on, your f on the floor, go ahead, please bend your knees for some bridge pose. So leave your arms onto the floor by your side. Move through these asanas, and so they really are just the minimum I think we need that will prepare us for the pranayama. So with your arms by your side, take a moment. Connect to that, that either the pulsation or the new sensations in the belly, in the heart. So as whereas most of our stagnation energetically would be dominant or predominant in the hips and the pelvis, the pulsation of the new that drives, that, that, that really the, the spontaneous pulsation of the now is most dominant in the heart in terms of being directing us toward what is harmonious, what is what moves us back to equilibrium, clear vision, inspiration, sensitivity, alertness to our own needs and to others' needs. Okay, so from here, inhale, press down through the feet, 
Heels, push your hips up. Again, five or six count inhale, five or six count exhale, lower down. Repeat it. Two more times, please. Pressing to your highest point. Good, go back up into the pose, now stay. It's up to you, if you'd like to interlace your fingers, you can. What I'm gonna ask you to do now is to inhale and hold the breath up to three counts. Tunes the pulsation I just described, the pulse that, again, activates us, the natural, it's truly the pulsation of the soul. The drive, the aspiration, to follow the now, to follow the natural impulses of the soul, and to break through the inertia, the cloudiness of the mind that inhibits us from spontaneously responding to that inner pulse. So two more rounds, retaining the inhale. Hold as you retain the breath, deeply aware mind anchored into the presence that you're collecting in the heart. Exhale, slowly lower down, pause. Just take a few more seconds here just to rest, to redirect the mind into a, vis into a vivid, even a robust sense of what is possible when we follow the heart. Good. Please roll over, come up into a really simple seated position. I'm going to suggest it's something as simple as Sukhasana. So my uh, shins are crossed, my knees relax down. You sit tall. So simple twist from here. Place the left hand on the floor behind you, right hand on the outer left thigh. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale and twist. Do it two more times. Coming out of the pose a little bit on the inhale. Twisting back into the pose on the exhale. And moving back into the posture. Now stay comfortably. Remember that the key, the most dynamic form of leverage, one, to deepen the twist, but also to cue and activate the vital forces that support present moment awareness, spontaneity. Now, it's through that turning of the navel. This is both giving you the ideal inner action for twisting more deeply, but it's also cueing these energies that move us toward activation, moving through our limitations, many of which are just truly self-imposed. Relax, head to center and then shoulders to center. Come back to the moment, clearing away the fog of the past, the fog of inertia. Change sides. So again, a few times in and out of the pose. And moving back into the pose. Stay. Okay, and then let your head come back to center. And then oh, you take a moment. Now you allow the shoulders to come back to the center. Okay, we'll stay in the same position here. Pause for a moment. Good. So when we're truly in an asana, there's nothing static about it. And there is a full experiencing of the present moment. We talk about this union of stability and ease. That's exactly what you're embodying. 
Okay, so now we're going to move into the next phase of this practice, the, working with the breath. Initially, I'm going to have you do Kabbalabhati, and at the end of the breath, you're going to clasp your big toes. No need to cross the arms, nothing like that. You hold your toes. You're going to take a deep breath in. Hold the breath. Go forward as far as you can. This is like a variation of Yoga Mudrasana. You stay in the forward stretch as long as you can. You're holding the breath, sensing perhaps all of the energy accumulating around the pelvic floor. You stay as long as you can hold, and then you come out to exhale. We'll do then the same thing again, but this time doing it on the hold after exhale. Okay? So initially, it's 27 Kabbalibhati breaths. Okay? Please sit tall. And begin. So I'm cleansing, I'm dispersing all the inertia, all of the dormant forces. And physiologically, pushing away, dispersing carbon dioxide. Accumulated waste. Inhale deeply. Retain the breath. Clasp the big toes. Go forward, please. Relax. Draw the chin in toward the throat a bit. Relax. Relax the body. Relax the mind. And now anchor the mind near the base of the spine and sense the subtle forces coming alive, vibrant, awakened, activated. If you want, you can remember OM or your personal mantra if you have one. If you can't hold the breath any longer, slowly come back up. Sit tall. Close your eyes. Take a few adjusting breaths. it again, this time holding after exhale, suspending the breath. Inhale, clasp your big toes, exhale, fold forward. Rest in the forward bend. As you stay, it's up to you. You can lift the lower belly as we did when we were standing in Agni Sara. It's up to you. Hold. Stay as long as you can comfortably. No ego. Listen to the inner intelligence and sense it flourishing as you rest in the suspension. breath any longer, of course, slowly sit up, take a deep breath in, take a few adjusting breaths. Okay, now we're going to continue with pranayama. Please go ahead and either where you are, you can remain there. If you have a cushion and you want to sit up on that, please be my guest. because we'll then lead directly from here into meditation. So sit up tall. Crown of the head is over the base of the spine. Please take a couple slow, smooth breaths. Reminding yourself now that you're establishing the link from asana, physical movement, to breath. The body is stable and calm. The breath is increasingly getting deeper.
If you can, now extend the inhale to nine counts, the exhale to nine counts. Now we're going to apply Viloma just on the inhalation. At the end of the next exhale, inhale a third of your volume, so about three counts, to the top third of the lung. Pause. Feel that presence or even pulsation starting to activate. After about two or three second pause, we inhale another third into the middle lungs. Be alert to the presence unique in the middle lung, the center around the solar plexus. Then inhale a final third and pause two or three seconds. Now into the lower lungs. Exhale, nine counts. So if that's too challenging for you and you can't do it calmly, then modify it. We inhale in three parts, ideally top, middle, lower. You pause the breath, more or less, two or three counts. Then you breathe out, more or less, the equal length of those three parts of inhale summed. So if you're breathing in three times three, your exhale is nine, something like that. Stay calm, but alert. And your intention is to direct the mind into that presence of the retained breath. Have the intention that it is inculcating, imbuing the mind with this innate intelligence the innate power knowledge and capacity to act qualities of the soul. So all doubt, lethargy, habituation, even misapprehension, misperception is subsumed in the power of the breath that you hold. You see it, you feel it, filling all the layers, all the corners of the mind. at your comfortable maximum. We'll do, continue for another four rounds. What 
asana is to the body, pranayama is to the mind. Pranayama is perhaps the most direct way to stretch, to collect, to direct the mind, to enhance its positive qualities and transform the aspects of mind that are less than constructive, less than helpful. Allow your breath to slowly adjust. You may want to take just a couple smooth inhales and exhales before you allow the breath to settle into just an involuntary flow. Now, please, as you deepen your breath, just allowing, excuse me, as you allow the breath to become slow, smooth, even, increasingly effortless, as you breathe in, see a wave come up through the center of the body, the inner channel, the central channel, moving from the base to the crown of the head as you breathe in, and moving down from the crown of the head back to the base as you breathe out. senses that you're tapping into, reactivating the source of all creative energy. Now relax, please, into the heart center. Here I'm going to ask you to rest, to meditate for as long as you like, but at least please spend the next two minutes tuning to this force, this unique force or presence. That can guide you back back to equilibrium. Back to knowing exactly what you need. As well as the energy to accomplish it, to achieve it. Be aware of that smiling, all-knowing presence at the heart. And finally, remember to appreciate something new, something you've forgotten to appreciate, and change one habit, one thing that you do.